Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for the G1 2015 Finals. It's finally here, and ladies and gentlemen, we definitely feel as though we have earned our way to the G1 Finals. Let me tell you, uh, having watched and commentated all but one show on this uh, in this tournament so far, it's been uh, quite the experience, to say the least. So... Let's get into this. We've got our New Japan World player set to 21 minutes even. And we are going to be hitting the play button on go. Three, two, one, go. And we've got our first match of the day. Is a, a six-man tag. Jushin Thunder Liger, Sho Tanaka, and Yohei Kamatsu versus Taguchi, Dorada, and Finlay. Yes, and we're seeing here Yohei Kamatsu start off with uh, Mascara Dorada. Should be an interesting matchup here. Nice six-man tag to get the blood flowing as we're on the final day of G1 Climax. And Ashton, that tournament final, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Hiroshi Tanahashi, I think it's going to blow the roof off this place. I think that's not going to be the only match on this card that blows the roof off. You've also got to look at Ricochet Kushida and the Junior Tag Team Tamp Championship match between the Young Bucks and Red Dragon. Absolutely. This card is stacked today. What a way to close out the G1 Climax 2015, the 25th anniversary of the G1 Climax. And you see there, Yohei Komatsu fights out of the waist lock there, takes control of the rest of Dorada. Dorada and I got to tell you, man, Komatsu. even though uh, we're, we're kind of new to Shotanaka, I have been impressed by him, but I still, I'm just uh, over the moon when it comes to Yohei Komatsu. He is so good. I, I enjoy his work so much. He reminds me of like a fusion between Shibata and Hideo Itami. I wholeheartedly agree with you. I think Yohei Komatsu has all the goods to really be something in this business. I look at Dorada, though. I believe you said he's only 26, is Masker Dorada, and so yep. good already. A nice Hurricane Rana there by Komatsu. I think Komatsu we're really... So impressive. Oh, look, look at this. Dorada with a springboard, but look, Komatsu rolled through. Ducks the clothesline. Nice Hurricane Rana, this time from Dorada. These guys going back and forth. You're really seeing the future when you see Dorada and Komatsu, you know, collide. And you're certainly seeing it here because now David Finley gets the tag. Yeah, David Finley is definitely going to be something. But I don't know uh, as far as him and Komatsu, what kind of fates they're going to end up with. Sho Tanaka is, like I said, he is impressive. I just uh, I just don't think that he's quite as good as, as Komatsu. You have to believe Yohei Komatsu is still leading the pack. But Sho Tanaka here going to try and show us what he's got. And David Finley breaks out of the side headlock. Vaults over. Nice leapfrog. Oh, went for the dropkick, but Sho Tanaka had it scouted. Very impressive there. Able to hold on. A nice shoulder block. Now he's going to kick David Finley in the back there. Sho Tanaka seems to be more ground and pound than aerial maneuvering. I kind of like that. And here comes Jushin Thunder Liger, the veteran Ashton. And you know Jushin Thunder Liger, not just the final day of the G1 Climax on his mind, but NXT TakeOver Brooklyn in just a matter of days. Yeah, absolutely. Less than a week now until TakeOver Brooklyn. What a baseball slide there to David Finley. Jushin Thunder Liger, I think he's just been reinvigorated. You know, I know you've made a couple points uh, on the past few uh, commentaries that we've done that he just seems, you know, renewed. He seems to have a pep in his step, I think, realizing that he is going to be competing at a TakeOver against Tyler Breeze, who is no slouch, one of the best that NXT has in the system. And look at that surfboard there that Jushin Thunder Liger has on David Finley. And look, you can see here, Komatsu and Tanaka playing defense. That's what a team is supposed to do. That is, you know, perfect communication, perfect strategy being implemented. And now just another Liger transitions into that camel clutch. David Finley, center of the ring, and Taguchi there. Using that, uh, that rear to break it up. I just realized that this is going to be the last time for a while, anyway. we're going to have to talk about Taguchi's rear in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, yeah, there's some good news. <laughs> And now Tanaka gets the tag back in, and a uh, nice forearm there to David Finley. So, like I said, I, I like that Tanaka seems more smash mouth compared to the other young boys, save for Cody Hall, who we have to remind ourselves is of young boy status. Yep. Just, you know, hard to remember given the, uh, the colorful attire and the association with the Bullet Club. But look at David Finley, though, fighting back. And, oh, it doesn't matter, though, because one form from Shotanaka just keeps the playing field, you know, on his side. Nice dropkick, though, from David Finley, showing some signs of life. And now Taguchi just itching for that tag, and he gets it there. Oh, like, man. Uh, would we like some ages for some of the guys in this match? 
Absolutely. Break it down, brother. Well, Sho Tanaka, 25. So he's a youngster for sure. But Yohei Komatsu, 27. Still young, but not quite as young. David Finley, though, John, get this, 22 years old. Wonderful. I'm a year older than he is, and I believe you are, too. I mean, that, that's I'm, crazy to think about. I'm almost three years older than he is. Oh, my God. That's insanity to me. I'll be 25 me. later this month, man. That's right, man. What are we doing with our lives, man? Like, he's competing in New Japan at 22 years old. But I, I don't know. Maybe his father put in a good word for him. And, hell, I'm, I'm not even attributing it solely to nepotism, though. David Finley is doing the work. And I got to give him all the credit in the world for that. Now Taguchi, though, isolated. Yeah, and now the, this team. The door was open to him at Best of Super Juniors. And now look at this. Shotanaka comes in with the charging forearm. And now look at that. Lude Liger with the nice lariat. Takes Taguchi off his feet, and look, Komatsu with a cannonball. Over here, and oh, look at the opposition. Oh. Tanaka was trying to play defense, but it was only one guy, and there were two guys coming in, and Liger didn't seem to have any interest in trying to stop them. Yeah, numbers game definitely caught up to that team, but they're still in control, it seems like. Uh, well, not now David Finley and Masker Dorado working together. Oh, what a cannonball there by David Finley. And the Masker Dorado with the Larry in the corner. And now Taguchi's going to go to the top rope. Uh, it's going to be a top rope hip thrust, and then there it is. It's hard to tell who's going to win this match, too, because there are young boys on both teams and no heavyweights on either team. That's a very good point, Ashton. I didn't really bother to, uh, to consider that. I think it does leave the uh, finish a bit more ambiguous than, say, other bouts we've experienced throughout the G1 Climax. Uh-oh, but I think we're about oh. to get our answer right here. Yeah. No! No! Two! Oh, that was close. Come on, Komatsu! Yo, hey, Komatsu could have had a big moment there, but then the jumping in Zagiri there from uh, Taguchi. And now he's Graduate gonna make... from your young boyhood. Oh, now look at that, that, that fall forward suplex. Yeah. And now Taguchi. Almost like a suplex face buster. And now Taguchi. I think he's calling for something big, but I don't know what. Uh, could it be? Well, no, there's going to be that kick. Is that going to do it? I, I I think it is. Wow, it wow. did. Almost like a Bomaye, if we're being honest. Yeah, he did the imitations of Shinsuke Nakamura, so that does make sense. I don't know what their relationship is, but I'd be so curious. Like, he, just, he does that every time. And it seems appropriate, given that Shinsuke Nakamura was the winner of the B-Block. He is in the finals tonight against Tanahashi. And the stakes are so high for that matchup. And Taguchi wins with almost a tribute to Nakamura. Maybe a sign of things to come tonight. We'll see. That's why we have a main event. But there are your winners for the first bout. David Finley, Taguchi, and Mascara Dorada. Quite a team there. We should have known that the team that had two juniors and a uh, young boy would beat the team with one junior and two young boys. Math is our friend. It and, is. You know, we, did, we, we didn't do the proper didn't math. Didn't embrace man. it properly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at that, that show of respect. Speaking of young boys, though, I think we know who's going to win our next match because there is only one young boy in this whole match. It's going to be Yuji Nagata, Manabu Nakanishi, and Jay White taking on the team of Tenzan, Kojima, and Captain New Japan. I love that Yuji Nagata and Nakanishi are going to be teaming up again. They were so fun in the last tag team bout they had together. Yeah, well, uh, and, and Tenzan and Kojima are an established tag team as well. They call themselves Tenkozi. Interesting. All right, well, we're going to we're gonna see it here, see how it all breaks down. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, six-man tag action uh, continues to roll on. I'll tell you, Ashton, you know, I, I hope Yuji Nagata can, you know, on this final day, really end it on a high note. Then again, you know, he kind of he beat the Intercontinental Champion uh, the other day. I, I yeah, mean, I mean, between, you... that's my thing, too, is I don't know if Nakamura's going to win tonight, but if he does win his match against Tanahashi tonight, it'll, it'll kind of help Goto out a little bit because Nakamura beat Goto. So you'd have to imagine that if Nakamura isn't in the world title picture, he would want to go after the IC title again, but. If he's in the world title picture, he, had, he doesn't really have much of a reason to go after the IC title. So, if Nakamura does win tonight and he ends up in the heavyweight championship uh, picture, then Goto still has to defend his title against Carl Anderson, who beat him, and Yuji Nagata, who beat him. 
I'd say a uh, triple threat for the Intercontinental Championship and Wrestle Kingdom 10 sounds pretty good to me, but that's just one idea I have. Or I just think know, that they're going to have a um, double, like two feuds. I think they're going to have him probably feud with Nagata for the next couple months, and then he'll end up with uh, Carl Anderson leading up to Wrestle Kingdom, if I had to guess. All right, I like that theory. I like that chain of thought. Uh, the Jay White here. Jay White Fired is 22 as well. Man, literally young boys. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe. Like, wow. Eugene Nagata, I'll tell you, if you're a Eugene Nagata fan, you uh, you had to be proud to wear your stripes throughout this tournament. Maybe not the best record, but I think Eugene Nagata showed more heart in this tournament than really anybody because, I mean, those ribs, I don't know the status of them, bruised, broken, whatever, but when something's wrong with your ribs, it's one of the worst things that could happen to you, especially in the capacity of being a professional wrestler, and Eugene Nagata just, uh, he marched on, you know, he powered through it, and the idea that he beat the Intercontinental Champion with that injury, whatever it is, uh, is just absolutely remarkable. Yeah. And now here comes Ten Cozy. You want to talk about people pulling out upsets and such, Kojima, who we have been just ragging on on commentary for his conditioning problems and, and just everything else, beat Carl Anderson. Sure did. Who, yeah, conversely, we were very praiseworthy of. Really thought, I mean, and me in particular, I thought he was quite a danger in this tournament, particularly, you know, the B block of which he belonged. And, yeah, to know that Kojima just took him out of the tournament. Played spoiler in the biggest way. Well, and that's my thing, too, is that it really did come down to the last possible minute moment for Carl Anderson because he was in the tournament. He could have potentially won right up until the semi-final, the semi-main event, I should say, of the final day for the B block. That's true. That's very true. And and just to think that Kojima, of all people, was kind of the fly in Carl Anderson's soup, so to speak. Yeah. Just boggles the mind. does. So now we've got, uh, we've got our six-man tag lined up here. Kojima, Tenzan, and uh, their teammates, Captain New Japan, right? Yeah. Taking on Nagata, Nakanishi, and Jay White. I mean, it, I, I hate to kind of play spoiler here, but it seems fairly obvious that Jay White's going to end up getting pinned in this match, doesn't it? I would certainly agree with you there. No contentions on my I mean, end. I suppose I could see like Nagata maybe pinning Captain New Japan, but that's really the only option for that team winning that I could see happening. Certainly, and now you see Kojima here rallying kind of the troops, kind of taking charge here, and Nakanishi's going to start for his team. Uh, good Lord. He is a that, large human being. That man is a bear. Yeah. Uh, that sounds contradictory because I said man and bear in the same sentence, but when he's that big, I mean, you just kind of deal with it. <laughs> man, bear, pig. There you go. Kojima there with the side headlock. It's interesting that Kojima is is going to sort of rely on having a Nakanishi breaks out of it with ease. And look at that, that shoulder block, I think, annoyed him more than anything else. Nakanishi just leans into these shoulders blocks, and it looks like it hurts the guy doing them more than it hurts him. I just feel like Nakanishi's saying in his head, well, that happened. Yeah, look at and that. Then you see, what see it... that's what I'm talking about. Like, Kojima ran into him, and he just kind of leaned into it and knocked Kojima off his feet. Oh, uh, Nakanishi. Uh, thanks nice to DDT Ashton's... there, though, from Kojima. That's the kind of offense he needs to be using against a man the size of Nakanishi. Oh, and opinion. Tenzan with the Mongolian chops, alternating with Kojima forearms. This is why they're a tag team. It's starting to become clear. They are, now, yeah, they're working well. Oh, and look at that, a scoop slam on uh, Nakanishi. That does not look easy to do. Oh, and the head, dual elbow drop, head drop. And now look at that, the stomp there. I, I mean, again, they're, they're they're playing smart against a guy the size of Nakanishi. You yeah, want to ground him, you want to take him off his feet. Tenzon's been in the ring for way too long. They're going to get disqualified. Yeah, the referee needs to get in here. I don't know how many times I've said it throughout the course of this G1 climax. I, I feel like I say it a lot during tournament bouts, especially Naito matches. But yeah, the referee needs to get in there and enforce it here. Tenzon needs to go back to his corner. <laughs> Captain New Japan gets the tag. This might be a mistake. <laughs> yeah, because... Nakanishi's recovered, and only so much can go down when that man has a vertical base. 
And now Kevin and Jimmy, and see, that's where the moment evolves. Look at evolves. the freaking strong base of Nakanishi. And what a Larry! Right Jesus! He didn't even <laughs> have to wind up for that. He just stood there and attacked. And then here comes Jay White. Nakanishi's like, eh, I'm bored. And then he just tags in Jay White. Jay White, of course, eager for any opportunity to show us what he's made of. You know, I would ask why Nakanishi hasn't been more involved in G1, but I'm guessing it has something to do with the fact that he's so big, he probably didn't really have the endurance to last the whole tournament. I would agree with that uh, assessment. I mean, we talk about Kojima having conditioning issues. Imagine if Nakanishi would have been in the tournament. I know. He would have started 4-0 and and lost every match after that because he just lost his breath. (laughs) Exactly. And here comes Yuji Nagata. A man who I hope won't find any difficulty breathing in his own right with those ribs. It depends on how heavily and viciously they're targeted. Oh nice and neat of the ribs there, Captain New Japan. It looked almost like Captain New Japan wanted one of those flying shoulder blocks, too. But Nagata caught him in the gut with that knee. Shut that shit down. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to pick up Captain New Japan here. And I'll tell you, like I said, all the respect in the world for Yuji Nagata. I mean, again, one of the toughest men in this tournament. It may not be reflected by his record, but... If you guys kept up with us and you saw his performances, you you know what I'm talking about. He's a tough guy. Right now. Absolutely. Shoots Kevin Japan off the ropes, and there's the flying shoulder block. He got one! And I, I suppose, fortunately or unfortunately, I guess it depends where you sit, there won't be another flying shoulder block or a proto-bomb or a five-knuckle shuffle, because we don't do that here. Yeah, but Kojima that's gets right, the tag. That's right. Yeah, that's... Thank you for pointing that out. And now lightning chops... Taste the lightning, John. Taste oh, the lo- lightning. <laughs> I love how into a coach you make it. It's like, ah, full power. And I just, oh. Whips him into the other corner. He's going to go for the forearm here. Rolls him out. He wants the elbow drop. He's, oh, but, oh, but Nagata recovered Nagata. way too quickly for that to happen. Oh, man. Now Nagata T-bone. Making T-bone. No. Oh, look at the forearm exchanges forearm. there. Oh, man, I, again. Oh, look I, I at, like, oh, did you see Nagata? He really staggered there. He oh, but did, nice but then knee, he got the nice knee. Knee to the gut. Like you said, whoever differentiates the offense is going to get the advantage. Ducks the lariat there. Oh, fakes Kojima out, and there's the and slap. The slap, yeah. And now it's going to be the T-bone. T-bone. There it is. Beautiful. Such great form on that. Oh, and look at Kojima. Oh, Koji, Koji Cutter. Cutter! Wow, dude, I didn't expect him to get it off that easily, especially because nobody's been targeting Nagata's ribs. But what? he kicked there you go. in the ribs right before he hit the cutter. Did he? I, I didn't catch that. Well, then that explains it then. Because, yeah, that was that yeah, was shocking. Yeah, it was almost like me. that Stone Cold Steve Austin setup. Like, he kicked him right in the gut, and then he went for the cutter. I see. But, oh, look at that. Nagata. Shit on me. The recuperative ability, unbelievable. Look oh, at look at Nakanishi. Oh, angle slam. No. Torture, Torture rack. rack. And now it's up to Jay White here. Jay White's going to have to break it up. Uh, oh, I know. Captain New Japan now. Oh, this could be over here. Because nobody's going to help Tenzon. Break it, Nagata. Break it. Oh, and, and oh. Captain New Japan there. Oh, I forgot. Captain New Japan is on oh, the Oh, nice. Look at that. Nakanishi oh. used Kojima to do a crossbody on Captain New Japan. Nakanishi's like, wait a minute. I'm strong. <laughs> what if Nakanishi would have done that crossbody? Would it have killed Captain New Japan? Yes. Yeah. Killed Cat in the New Japan, and, and dare I say, it may have collapsed the ring. Yeah. And there, Jay White ducks the clothesline there, gets the back elbow. It's funny, too, because I'm not even saying Nakanishi's fat. He's just so dense looking, like. Jay White measuring tens on. He seems like the there. type of dude that could have a BMI under 20 and still weigh like 400 pounds somehow. Exactly. And oh my God, that Larry in the He's corner. He's got that Mark Henry build. Uh, Jay White's going to do the drop kick, yes. What a nice drop kick, too. Such great form. <laughs> Nagata counting with the ref. That was amazing. Oh, and look at this. Captain New Japan. Almost a mandible claw here on Nakanishi. Gets him yeah, out of the ring. Nerf. And now Tenzan, Kojima, and Captain New Japan are all in the ring with Jay White. Jay White's fighting off Tenkozy, though. Yeah, he's fighting him off for the moment, Not but I think long. he's about to get caught here. And there it nice. is. Nice. Flapjack cozy cutter. Almost a 3D there. And now look at this. The Anaconda Vice. This is going to be the end of the match. Yeah. I don't no, think Tenzon's no. even legal. I don't think the ref even kept track at this point. I, I think Tenzon was legal, though, to be fair. And there, there's the tab out. There is the tab out. Yep, there it is. Self-preservation. JY needs to live to see another day. 
He's just a young boy, Tenzon. Don't break his arm. So Tenzon, Kojima, and Captain New Japan get the win. I'll tell you, this match really got chaotic for uh, for a few moments, but uh, through chaos, resolution was found, and there are your winners. And I mean, you did play spoiler at the beginning, partner. You said, "Well, they got the young boy. You're gonna lose." So there you go. That's right. And now, speaking of matches that are incredibly obvious as far as the result goes. Up next, we've got Michael Elgin going one-on-one with Yoshihashi. I was so confused when I saw this because, really, why? But I guess they're just <laughs> trying to make Elgin look stronger. I don't know. I think that's the best reaction I've heard you have recently throughout this tournament. Why? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of feel bad for Yoshihashi because he's fighting above his weight class, man. He must have bumped into somebody and made them spell their coffee because... Uh, after what we saw Elgin do to Ishii, and Ishii walked away the winner of that match. Yeah. Can you imagine what Elgin is going to do to Yoshihashi? Good God. Have we ever seen a squash match on on New Japan before? <laughs> no, not that I recollect. Our first. Yeah, folks. Um, I, Normally, I tell you to take a deep seat and enjoy. I, I don't know how deep you want to take the seat, though, for this matchup, because... To my partner's point, it uh, it might be over pretty quick here. That'd be hilarious Yoshi. if like these guys had their long, elaborate like two minute entrances each, and the match ended up being like three minutes long, so that the entrances combined for longer time than the match itself. Right though, and that's not to overlook Yoshihashi though. I mean, he he's a very talented junior. And it's just again to your point, he's fighting outside of his weight class in a major way. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I feel like if this was like a Yoshihashi versus uh, say Kushida, who we know he has his hands full today, I'd say guys, you know, take a deep seat. It's going to be a barn burner. This is going to be an execution, folks. If you ever wanted to know what an execution looks like in pro wrestling, this is probably the match for you because I, I I just see Elgin making quick work of Yoshihashi here. I'm going to say under five minutes. What do you think, John? That actually seems like a great estimate to me, partner. I'm going to say under five minutes as well. I will affix my signature to that. Yeah, because if it's not just like a really quick, like 30 seconds and done kind of match, I could still see Elgin getting the win in like three minutes, four minutes, and some odd seconds, something like that. Dude, we're talking, I, I won't call it trash because we're just being honest. I know we don't have any problems with the Oshihashi, but can you imagine? No, if I like just Yoshihashi. Fought Elgin? I actually do I like, like him too. Book. Yeah, I like him too. But I've already imagine? said that he's like the junior mini me version of Kojima. Like he looks so similar to him sometimes. Oh yeah, like I I like Yoshihashi as well. He's made me a fan, you know, with his performances in the tag team bouts. I'm just saying, like we're talking all this stuff, and can you imagine if he caught Elgin and like a schoolboy or something? And it would make it win? amazing. <sighs> oh man, that would be so cool. I think. I mean, you know, El- Elgin's no slouch. It's not just the idea that you're fighting outside of your weight class, but you, when you look at it from a credential point of view, I, I honestly don't know what Yoshiashi's accomplished. I'll make no bones about that. But we do know that Michael Elgin is former ROH world champion. So And that he had four wins in G1, one of which was, you know, a pretty big win against, well, I mean, it was by forfeit, but still, he technically beat Jinsuke Nakamura. Yeah, I mean, there you go. Uh, You you look at that rap sheet, even with what he's been able to accomplish here. You know, as a singles competitor in Japan, living out the dream, uh, he didn't do too bad for himself. And Yoshihashi, maybe maybe he'll use that staff, you know? Maybe he'll just hit Elgin right in the ribs or something. He'll channel his inner Kilik. There you go. Soul Calibur reference. For the win. And, yeah, Yoshihashi... I don't know what his game plan is. You know, the time for joking and talking is over because soon that bell is going to ring and it's all in Yoshihashi's hands. Absolutely. Maybe more appropriately, it's in Elgin's hands because I could just picture them mauling Yoshihashi, but, uh, you know, we'll see. That's why we have a matchup, folks. On an unrelated note, I just found a Japanese character on the New Japan World page that looks like a super friendly smiley face. That is amazing. That's great. He just showed it to me, folks. It's uh, I can confirm. <laughs> Super friendly, right? Certainly. It's just uh, like, yeah. hey, bud, how you doing? And now with the lockup, let's get back into this. Oh uh, yeah, I don't really know how much there's gonna be to get back into, but look at Yoshiaji, and that's gonna using be... his quickness, using his quickness. His I quickness. like that. 
Lariat in the corner there, and already, though, the power game showing itself. Yeah, you're not going to toss Selgan into the ropes. He's going to toss you into the ropes, and then he's going to put the fuel. Oh, look at this. Yoshihashi, though. Oh, Elgin's got way too much strength and way too low of a center of gravity. Didn't let that happen. Oh, but no. Yoshihashi out of the way for the the butt bomb. And now the drop kick. Look at that. Basement drop kick. Yoshihashi holding his own for the early goings of this match. My concern for Yoshihashi, even though he has a very evident quickness advantage, I mean, that was one of my concerns right there. Yeah, my the concern game, is yeah. as much cool stuff as he can do to kind of avoid Elgin and use Elgin's momentum against him and stuff, it's going to take literally one move for Elgin to turn the tide in this match. Exactly, Ashton. You echoed my concerns perfectly. And like, it just tosses Yoshihashi on the floor like he was nothing. And Elgin the- is getting established really well in New Japan as just a powerful monster. I don't even want to say heel, just a powerful monster. Like, that's it. Yeah, Because I mean, it seems like the crowd actually likes him, too, which is really weird because a lot of the time the crowd isn't super quickly uh, – they don't usually take so quickly to, to Gaijin. You know, Ashton, we know it's been Elgin's dream for the longest time to compete here, you know, to come here and – and, you know, especially if you're a part of something as big as G1 Climax and everything else. Do you think he'll be invited back? I mean, Oh, my God, absolutely. Just... Absolutely, yeah. I think this was Elgin's coming out party. This this is probably going to end up leading to the best run of his career, if I had to guess. I'm happy for him. You know, on a very, on a very personal level, you want every guy to succeed because uh, they put uh, food on the table. So good on Michael Elgin. And not good, though, on Yoshihashi. That suplex. And you know what? That vertical suplex comes off so well on television in a gigantic arena like this because he does it right in the middle of the ring. And he does that spin around with his hand out and, like, getting the crowd into it. It just comes off so well on TV, in my opinion. Yeah, Elgin really knows how to really maximize his environment. What a Oh, my God. Good God. That's the kind of forearm that would have rocked Ishii. It's the kind of forearm you give when you're getting into a bar fight and somebody said something you didn't like. If you wanted to end it in one punch, I mean, that, that's how you do it. Good God. It's I mean, hey, man, what other reason is there to get into a bar fight other than somebody said something that you don't like? I know, right? So glad this man here understands me. But uh, <laughs> Elgin, you know, Yoshihashi there. Yoshihashi oh, look at Yoshihashi with... selling some fight back, though. But something I wanted to say earlier, Ashton, the thing about matchups like this when there's such a mismatch you know as we've noted outside of weight class for Yoshihashi it has to be a chain of offense just to get even a little bit of momentum against Elgin but look at that blockbuster there that may be the start of it and And, and again it really all comes back to Yoshihashi just whipping out every move that he knows that uses his opponent's momentum against them exactly Ashton that's right on point and to kind of round out what I was saying, it comes right back to what you were saying as well, because with Elgin, by contrast, it's just one maneuver to regain control and not a chain. Oh, like look at that chop! That chop had a lot of momentum behind it, a lot of force. Now look at that. He hung. actually got Elgin, Elgin up, John. Look at this. He doesn't have any chaos numbers to help hold him in, but I guess it doesn't matter. That's true. And look at that hooks the leg here, too. And Elgin kicks out. Yoshihashi showing more fight than uh, I think we gave him credit for. Do you, do you know what our current time is? Because we said under five minutes. Oh, I haven't kept been... track. If I had to guess, I'd say it's been about three minutes. Yeah, I was thinking the same. So let's see if Yoshihashi can last. Maybe even win. We've been talking about him so Oh, but Elgin. No. Yoshihashi again. Elgin with the waist lock up against yeah, the ropes. Reversal. Elgin ended up by himself there in the middle of the ring. Elgin, though, power slam. No. Yoshihashi inverted DDT. And look at that, though. Elgin in great positioning. Uh, Yoshiashi goes to the cover, too. And oh, Elgin, Elgin yeah. kicks out. That was actually kind of close, though. That was a lot closer than I thought it would be. I got to tell you, man, Yoshihashi has demonstrated that he can get Elgin off his feet and down. If he can do it again, but get him in positioning for that senton, this one could be over here. And Oh, look at that, though. Elgin moving out of the way. That was the big mistake right there. Oh, we caught the legs. That, I think, was the big music. And there's oh, the discus forearm. The rolling forearm oh, to the back of the head. God. And now a deadlift German. He didn't he even bridge it. it. He's holding it in. He's going to go for a two and probably even three and probably bridge the third one. Oh, he bridged the oh, second, he bridged one, the there, second one. Two. And Yoshihashi kicks out. I don't even know. Yoshihashi is still conscious, to be honest with you. But he's staying in this thing. And look at that. That look on his face is just like, is it over yet? He's calling for it. Elgin's calling for the end. I think he's going to go for the power bomb here, the buckle bomb. Yoshiashi has got to find a counter. 
He has got to find a way to stay in this fight. Either that or Elgin is just going to have his way. And look at Yoshihashi here. That stopping power and the back body drop. Wow. I thought he was going to try and rely on a Hurricane Runner or something. Again, more uh, quickness-based, more agility-based. But no, Yoshihashi powering through. He has a little bit of a power game that I think we underestimated. And now look at that. Caught the boot of Elgin, but look at that. The free And Elgin has here. an athleticism game that you can't underestimate. Exactly. Now Yoshihashi off the ropes there. Yoshi, but Elgin with the big boot. And now oh, Elgin's Elgin going to go off the ropes. He wants a lariat. He wants... Oh, no. He's going for a pump kick. Yoshihashi, though. Super kick! Oh, but Elgin oh, but the with the lariat. lariat takes Yoshihashi's head off. Just when I think Yoshihashi may create that opening, Elgin just eats it, and he gets... An offensive maneuver, that Lariat completely resetting the playing field. I'd still say control Elgin. And Yoshihashi yeah, I mean, it's here. like we said, all it takes is one move, and he completely shifts the tide, and that's what he just oh, did. Oh, man. And I believe we are over five minutes now, if I had to guess. So, Well, I got to give credit to Yoshihashi for surviving. Oh, apron but... plex. We're getting an apron plex. Or no, an apron uh, Falcon's arrow. Falcon's arrow. And we've seen him do it to the likes of Ishii, so you know he'll be able to do this to Yoshihashi with ease. Exactly. Can Yoshihashi find a counter? No, he's not going to. He's not going to. And there it is. Such a great-looking move. That could be his finisher if he wanted it to be. I would buy it. I wouldn't have any questions about that. And Yoshihashi's staying in it, though. There is no quit in Yoshihashi. They're telling a great David versus Goliath story here. Yoshihashi's facial expressions are excellent. Yoshihashi staying in the fight. Elgin, no, though, Elgin saying calling this for fight the end. Is over. Yeah, Elgin saying this fight is over. And now, could it be the buckle bomb here? He tried it once. He got back body drop for his troubles. Yoshihashi still, though, showing that resistance. The hard clubby blows to the back. And look at that, the, 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 the knees to the face. Inverted lung blower. And then the lariat there, oh, staggering you're Elgin. Take Elgin off his feet with that, though. Oh, and he checked the arm, did Elgin. Yeah, he sure did. And now Yoshihashi is going to counter this, isn't he? Yeah. Under. I got it. Wow. Two. Oh, that was close. You have got to be kidding me right now. I don't know why Yoshihashi actually didn't go for his uh, his senton, because I think that strike took Elgin out. But I think, you know what, Yoshihashi, and I can't blame him for this, had that sense right of here, urgency. Right here, he's going to go for it, dude. He's going to go for the uh, senton right here. If he hits this, are we about to see Yoshihashi beat my guy? No, no. Elgin back up. Wow. I got to tell you, though, kudos to this match for having me on the edge of my seat actually questioning if Yoshihashi can pull it off. And now what's Elgin thinking about here? It looks Yoshihashi. like he might be thinking about another, maybe a delayed vertical, but I think Yoshihashi's going to hit him with a power bomb. Oh, that could be it there. That could be it. He just did a sunset flip power bomb. Now he's going to go for the senton. If he hits it, you got to wonder if it's going to be enough to put Elgin away, but it doesn't oh. matter. Elgin out of the way. Elgin moved out of the way. And oh, and that man. blood stain from day four, Toriano getting busted open, is still on the canvas. you got to wonder how often that ring gets cleaned. But... Yeah, I was going to say, you got to scrub your rings more more deeply there in New Japan. i got to be honest, Ash. I mean, Yoshi. Oh, uh, is it going to be? Uh, Yoshiashi still. Man, this guy he just is, won't quit. He's showing some fight, man. Oh, but Elgin, Elgin back, again, yeah, back, back fist. to the future. And now this is going to, and another, oh, that was a discus forearm there. It sure was. And now he's going to go for the power bombs. Third time. Could be the charm here. It is. Buckle bomb. Oh, and now he's going to pick him back up and do the spinning power bomb, and that'll be it. Oh, 99 and all. Oh, there it is. And that's it. But Ashton, what a game effort. From Yoshihashi. Yeah, again, I can't emphasize enough. That was a really, really good David versus Goliath story. And Yoshihashi was a wonderful David. He did an excellent job playing that role. Goliath breaking the slingshot over his knee, so to speak. Yeah. He wins this one. But not without a fight. I got to tell you, Ashton, I thought after that sunset flip powerbomb from Yoshihashi, he was going to get the senton off. I was actually And my concern surprised. was whether he got the senton off or not. I didn't know. I didn't think that the send time would be enough to put Elgin away, to be honest. And you know what? I I only believe that. I guess they wanted you to believe that it would be because he never did get it off. Like Elgin either got up to his feet or he moved out of the way. It's kind of like how WWE protects the Red Arrow. Yeah. Like they kind of wanted to protect the send on there from Yoshiashi. That's true. And Yoshiashi there again in a ice bag. There. I mean, he put in the work. 
I mean, we, we, we made our bets and this and that. Yoshihashi went to distance. And uh, for that, I give him all the respect in the world. But Elgin uh, can punctuate the final day of G1 Climax Day 19 with the victory. And let's see, what's our next matchup here, partner? Well, I was before we do that, I just wanted to kind of say that that was actually a lot more enjoyable than I thought it would be, that match. Completely agree. Next match, Chaos versus Bullet Club. Sakuraba, Ishii, and Yano versus Fale, Takahashi, and Tonga. Interesting. Very. Tama Tonga could be the ace in the hole for, uh, for Bullet Club in this tag team bout. He has been so impressive in these lately. I don't know about that. I think he might be the one tapping out in this. Could be. Sakuraba doesn't mess around, man. That's what I'm saying, man. I think Sakuraba is going to end up getting Tama Tonga to tap out. I love now the comes idea of Takahashi with Mao. Well, Mao uh, changing her hair. I, I actually didn't recognize her. If you didn't say it was Mao, what is that? Her, is that even her? I don't know. I can't. I don't. I don't even think it doesn't look like one. her. I'm pretty sure it's not her. Yeah, yeah. I have to agree. I just saw the the uh, silhouette when I said that, and now seeing her, it's not her. It's not. Yujiro Takahashi. I gotta tell you, he reigned on Hanma's parade, and then his final tournament bout, leaving a Hanma now, with a record of one and eight. Tama Tonga and Bad Luck Fale on their way to the ring as well. Tama Tonga, I'll tell you, one strange dude. Oh, and his but, face paint's red now. Ooh, that's, uh, that's a bit disconcerting, partner, considering how fragile Tama Tonga is. Yeah. But certainly capable. He is certainly capable. That is without question. For sure. Tremendous athlete. And bad luck folly. You want to talk about you know great performers. He was so dominant in the G1 Climax up until the end, really. And you got to imagine that... Uh, Bad luck, Fale, still looking for a measure of comeuppance here in this match because uh, Toriano is part of the opposition. You know, he is representing chaos in this match. Bad luck, Fale, embarrassed by Toriano in the worst way. One of, I think, our only count-out victories in the G1 Climax tournament came uh, at the expense of Bad luck, Fale by Toriano. You say one of, but it was literally the only count-out victory. Yeah, it, it, it was the only one, yeah. Crazy to think about. And I don't think Bad Luck Folly wanted to be remembered that way no. in the G1 Climax. And can I just say, too, as a fan, I love that Toriano and Ishii are going to be on the same team. Because even though I know they're like stable mates and everything, it's just such a great contrast because uh, uh, Ishii just seems like no nonsense. And Toriano is nothing but nonsense. Yeah, yeah, so. I agree. Takahashi uh, absolutely loves what he's seeing right now. And so does Tamatanga. Do you see him sliding around there? <laughs> I know, Tama Tonga just can't get enough. That's funny. I mean, I guess we should be thankful, I guess, that Carl Anderson isn't in do this you, match. Cause... Do you see the label there, bad boy Tama Tonga? I didn't know that was his nickname. I so, didn't either. Uh, I didn't think it was, to be honest. But it said bad boy Tama Tonga on the, on the, uh, the nameplate there. That was funny. And uh, in future G1 climaxes, if, if he should ever be in one, which I would love to see, I'll have to remember that nickname. I'll, uh, I'll use it every now and again. You know, I would really prefer if you didn't. <laughs> That's just such a bad nickname. Like, I, I'd rather just call him Tomatonga and be done with it. There you go. But we're still waiting on chaos here. And here we go. YTR on his way out. Oh, man. There, Showing those That was DVDs. a really cool. It was like a class picture of, of chaos. That was funny. Yeah, I like that, man. I don't know. I, I think... Somebody broke one of Toriano's DVDs yesterday, and we kind of frowned on him for it. And yeah. I'm just wondering if he ever got reimbursed. <laughs> I kind of doubt it. Here we go. Oh, man. Toriano here on his way out, has his DVD, has his water bottle, has his chair. Out comes uh, Sakuraba behind him and Ishii behind them. So you explain to me that Toriano is a heel and the crowd loves him, and it, it really isn't hard to see why. Like, yeah. I love Toriano. I, I think I really came away being a big fan of his, you know, throughout this tournament, just because the shenanigans, though. Well, I mean, that's my thing, too. Like, you just look at what he does. Of course he's a freaking heel. Everything he does is cheating. That's kind of the <laughs> point. I've even told you that there was someone on Reddit that I completely agreed with, and I'm going to use this quote again that said, Toriano is better at cheating than most people are at wrestling in this tournament. 
It's so true, it's scary. And Toriano there. I'm telling you, one of these days I'm going to get one of those DVDs and I'm going to tell you guys about it. And Dude, I'll, it's so it's hilarious good. because the, the cover of that DVD reminds me of like uh, like an uh, offshoot of uh, – it's like a ripoff. You know what I mean? Like it just looks like a ripoff. Like a bootleg. Yeah, or, a bootleg. Like... Thank you. That's the word that I was trying to think of, and I was just incapable. But yeah, a, it looks like a bootleg. It, it, and he's selling it, and it's like, it's his own material. Like, it would be like a Fox representative trying to sell a DVD that Fox put out. and But it's, it's totally bootleg, and it's super obvious that it's bootleg. Yeah, believe me, guys. When I was a kid, I actually went bootleg shopping on a few VHS tapes, and... uh yeah, not not exactly the greatest business in the world. Yeah, dude, I like I when I was younger, I went to a freaking uh um some kind of market. It was basically people were out trying to sell their stuff. I forget what the name of the market is. I don't I'm sure there's a name for it. I just can't think of it again because my brain is fried after this G1 climax tournament. But uh I ended up getting I think I was like 11 or 12 years old and I was like, "Oh my god, they have Madagascar. It might have been later than 11 or 12, but they have Madagascar, and this movie is still in theaters. I'm buying it, and it was it was cam quality. So, like, <laughs> yeah, it didn't really didn't work really out so well. Yeah. And my, then that uh, day, I ended up getting Madagascar and The Longest Yard, the Adam Sandler movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 remember, I remember one of my first uh, pickups was Home Alone 3, actually. Oh, jeez. Which, uh, yeah, my, my first disappointment with the free market, the first of many. <laughs> so, there you go. And here we go. Now, Takahashi really taking it to Ishii. He hit a big boot on him to get him down, and he's just been kicking him while he's down the whole time now. Yeah, Yujiro Takahashi, we, we, we've used this word so often, very shrewd. And even though there is a size differential between him and Ishii, you know, I, I, if anybody can size negate, differential, he's taller than Ishii, dude. Well, I, I mean, like, I guess, I mean, in terms of like build and stature, like strength and stuff like that, he's a bigger man, I think, than Yujiro Takahashi in that sense. Yeah, I mean, uh, even though it's not a significant build difference, though. Oh, I, now this is a significant build difference. Yeah, bad luck, Fale, just charging a Toriano. We mentioned that. I think Fale is actually the one the Toriano beat with the low blow, wasn't he? He was, yeah. That that was again. That's why I said like bad luck folly, looking for that comeuppance because Toriano it, got a count of victory at bad luck folly's expense. Yeah. <laughs> and wasn't was it folly then that ended up breaking the DVD as well? I I don't think so though. It probably no. was. It might have been way. Naito. Might have been Naito. Oh, and look at the shoulder was. block there from bad luck folly. They've really made bad luck folly look like a legitimate threat in this tournament. They really have. I mean, when you get a win over the likes of uh, Tanahashi and really almost beat AJ Styles. And, and he that, uh, dominated like, Makabe. Oh, and mauled him. Mauled him. And, and I look at the alternating. This clubby loves the side of the head there. Like, just clotheslines back and forth. And now look at Tamatonga there with the hard back elbow. I love it. Tamatonga is so good. He's definitely my favorite kind of non-featured Bullet Club member. I completely agree with you. I have really grown to admire this man's work. Like just looking in the Bullet Club, clubs. obviously my favorite's Carl Anderson and then AJ, but then I think Tom Atongo would probably be third. And now look at the game of confusion here between Tom Atongo and Toriano, and then it ends with a drop kick. Toriano is a shockingly good actor. Can I say that? I love him. He's amazing. There are people that hate him. I don't know how, but there are people that hate him. They, they just need more joy in their lives. They do. Like, like if you hate Toriano, you're trying to be miserable. You're actively trying to not be happy. And Tomatonga, I'll tell you, if he was making those gestures at me and just smiling through all that face paint, I would be so put off. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you say put off, I say horrified. What's the difference? <laughs> More or less, right? And now you to Takaji, they're going to do the uh, Snapmare takeover there to Toriano. I'm thinking single leg drop kick there, and, and yeah, more or less. Hooks the leg here, too, and Toriano stays in it. Uh, Toriano, he is going to have to get to his corner. He is going to have to find his, you know, his chaos stalemates make a tag. Tag in Sakuraba. Yeah, so we can slap a submission on somebody and just end this thing. Yeah. Oh, and look at the chop there from Takahashi. A lot of power behind that. You could even see uh, Toriano trying to catch his breath a little bit. But, oh, look at that. 
Takahashi giving Tori onto the opening. I think Bad Luck Folly tried to tell him, and, he, and he's gesturing, and Takahashi falls victim to it anyway. You know, Takahashi is such a weird <laughs> case because, like, he's not a big guy by any means. He's probably, like, 5'11", maybe 6 feet tall at the very most. No more than, like, 215, 220 pounds. And his entire offensive arsenal is power-based. He he really is a complex case. Isn't he it? wrestles like a freaking monster. He wrestles like a freaking giant, like a seven foot tall, big guy. But he's he's really not. He's pretty much the same size as everyone. And I just want to note to everybody: despite bad luck, Fall, I have a little run in there. Yujiro Takashi still the legal man, and now Sakuraba, the legal man, you know. Oh, look at this! This the bite. Ah, uh, just biting. Sakuraba. That's the only now... thing Takahashi does that makes sense for someone of his size. Yeah. And now oh, look at this, the Kimura. The Kimura lock here. Can Takahashi find his way to the ropes? No. Sakuraba, though, controlling the positioning. Come on. Able to, oh, uh, look now at look this. At the, now the guillotine. That transition, though. And oh, now look at this, Takahashi. Look at that fisherman buster. Ingenious counter. T Yujiro Takahashi was in a precarious position. He used that power game that we just spoke about. Got the Fisherman Buster, and he's staying in it here. Tomatonga Tama just got Tama the As well as Ishii. This is an interesting matchup that we really haven't seen much of in this tournament. Oh, oh man. Maybe power that's why slam. Power Slam. Like I said before, that's almost like a Power Slam Brain Buster because it's almost like he gets him up into a vertical position and then just drops him. And now Tomatonga. Nice drop, drop kick. Oh, but Ishii doesn't give a crap. Oh, what a shoulder block there. What a monster Ishii is. Ishii is a behemoth of a man, that is to be sure. I mean, just so dominant, so impressive. And there's the vertical suplex. Absolutely. Yeah. Slight delay, goes oh. into the cover. Only a two count, though. Tell you, Tomatonga's staying in this. He, <laughs> he's got a getting toughness getting Tomatonga's to face paint all over himself. <laughs> it was bound to happen eventually. It seems quite appropriate that it's Ishii doing the damage. And there's a headbutt there. Well, I only say that because it almost looked like he was bleeding on his left arm, but it's just red face paint. <laughs> And now Tomatonga, look at this. Spear! Spear by Tomatonga. Taking a page out of Cousin Roman's playbook. There you go, man. And now look at that. The fireman's carrying into the flapjack, and yes. Oh, Ishii landed on his head, it looked like. Yeah, it's not going to be a good time. Nice and there, Ishii, I'll tell you, tough as nails. I mean, that that's an understatement. I don't know if there's uh, there are any words in this or any other language to truly articulate how tough the stone nibble is. That's why uh, you just watch his matches. You just watch and uh, be Oh, he's over the head shrinker like a... already. No, Ishii. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, that headbutt. So freaking tough. Oh, come on, Tamatanga. You're a Pacific Islander. That headbutt didn't hurt you. It hurt Ishii. Oh, no. oh look at that Toriano coming in. Of course. And look at Takahashi and Fale. Yeah, this match is broken down here. What a lariat there by Takahashi. Fale with the splash. Uh, it really would take a triple team ever to beat Ishii, so this doesn't surprise me. And now is Tomatonga going to try again for the head shrinker? No, it's going to be that spinning inverted neck breaker, and there it is. Good God. Two, and Ishii stays in it anyway. I swear, in every single Ishii match, I'm afraid that guy's broken his freaking neck. You and me both, man. You and me both. Tomatonga, though, staying on Ishii. You have to. You have to have a sense of urgency now when the your entire team is in the ring, and Ishii's by himself. There's a splash by Tomatonga. And oh, what is Folly going to do here? Nothing. Oh, wow. Brilliant by Ishii. That was really smart. That was ingenious. That's not only how you stay in the fight, but you start getting some leverage on your side. And now look at that Toriano double low blows. Oh, my God. Toriano is absolutely insane. And now, oh, look at Ishii there. Did, oh. did you notice how freaking proud Toriano was of himself, too? He's like, I helped, guys. Oh, look at this. Sakuraba has, has Tamatanga in a headlock. Yeah, he, he, was, he was choking him out. Oh, what, what a lariat. lariat. Good God, what a lariat. Now I think he's going to follow it brain up with buster, the brain buster. Maybe. This is it. This is it. Tamatanga's done. Brain buster. Beautiful. Sakuraba choked him out, and then Ishii got the lariat and the brain buster with ease, and that's it. Well, he didn't tap out, but he definitely got pinned by Ishii. No shame in that. What a team these three make. And they all really contributed in significant ways. Toriano's double low blow took Takashi and Fale out. <laughs> now taunting them with the double low blow motion. 
I love freaking Toriano, man. I don't know how he does it, but he's so good. The original troll. <laughs> At his motion. He's making fun of the fact that he loved double low blood them. He's been like just a nuisance to bad luck Fale's testicles this tournament. <laughs> I would not protest a, a Toriano world championship reign if that day was to ever come upon us. I, for one, would welcome our jokester. Dude, overboard. he would never lose it. Champion's advantage. Hello? For life. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. What are they doing? <laughs> oh man she, she's saying no good she's throwing up the x herself yeah. you're gonna have to get uh, an ice pack on that takashi yeah if she approved before she doesn't anymore <laughs> uh, takahashi lost a bunch of swimmers on that one. Oh my god i need i need to get it together <laughs> But, yeah, that was... Up next, a, though, up time. next is looking like an amazing match. Are you ready for this, John? Lay it on me, partner. Naito Makabe and Hanma versus Ibushi, Goto, and Shibata. Wow. Yeah, right, though? That is a six-man tag. My two favorite non-Nakamura guys in this in this company are in this match on opposite sides, Naito and Shibata. Well, I mean, Shibata did beat Naito in the G1 Climax Tournament. He did. He did. And it's also worth noting that Makabe and Hanma are apparently a team, and we already know that Goto and Shibata are a team because they beat the Bullet Club for the World Tag Team titles at Wrestle Kingdom 9 this year. That's very true. So they might have that experience advantage of working together over the opposition. No, no, they're... they're... <laughs> Makabe and Hanma are a tag team, and they're on one team. And then ah. and Shibata are a tag team, and they're on the other team. Ah, okay. So that whole Six man tag. So it's Makabe and Hanma, who are a team, teaming up with Naito, who is probably going to cost them this match, taking on <laughs> Ibushi and Mayutag, who is Goto and Shibata. Uh, I love how matter-of-factly, though, you just mentioned and they're teaming with Naito, who's probably going to cost him this match. Oh, well, but, I you know. know he is. Like, he, he's probably going to have another one of those moments where he could totally break up a pin, but it's not him getting pinned, so he just can't force himself to care. <laughs> oh, I don't know what it is, but you got me laughing all over the place today, man. That's and the so great thing is, the... we all know Hanma's going to be the one that gets pinned, too. I know, right? Because when you can't actually bring a junior in to do the job, just let Anma do it. <laughs> I could just picture Anma. Oh my god, I got the torpedo Kakeshi. Now I can do the Kakeshi from the top rope, but I got to do the slam first to give him a little bit of time. I'm going to go to the top rope Kakeshi, and I miss. <laughs> and then it's just all over from there. And then just Ibushi comes off the top rope with a Phoenix Splash, and he's dead. <laughs> that's, that's really, yeah, that's Hanma's life right there. <laughs> If anybody was ever Dude, if justified. that's the finish to this match, <laughs> if that is the finish, Hanma tries to hit a, a, door, a top rope Kakeshi, it misses, and then he loses to a Phoenix Splash. I'm calling it right now. I'm a freaking prophet. <laughs> uh, no arguments here, man. No arguments here. As here comes Naito. This the lovely, <laughs> lovely psychopath. <laughs> the fly in everyone's ointment. <laughs> Where is he? He's not even going to show up to the match. He's not even going to show up. He's going to get replaced with, like, Cody Hall or something like that. I feel like when I started using the term douche nozzle, oh, I had is. some... There he is. Oh, there he is. He did show up. I was going to say, I feel like when I started using the term douche nozzle, I had somebody like Naito in mind, but he does show up. <laughs> oh, man. Does that make I'll tell you what, though. Some of a douche nozzle, though, John? Uh, beg pardon, partner? Does showing up make him any less of a douche nozzle, though? Uh, we're about 50-50 right now. Especially when he ends up costing his team the, the win in this match. I know. It's inevitable, folks. It is. It's inevitable. He's he's going to definitely sabotage it. But Ashton, getting back on a more serious note for a second, I mean, Naito really has been impressive with this change in attitude. Oh, he's been amazing! Then again, he also lost to Doc Gallows. That is true. He lost to Doc Gallows when it really mattered most, and uh, that's what really eliminated him from the tournament. 
And then, you, you know, know what's he... really crazy too is that he's had two consecutive tournaments where something like that has happened, where he's been just amazing and he beat the big names, but then he lost when he should have won. Uh, yeah, like, I, I... If you look at his record, he only went five and four, but he beat AJ Styles and Tanahashi, right? Right. Well, last year, he beat uh, Okada and Styles, but. At the end of the day, he still overall only won five matches. So again, he went five and five last year. So this is becoming a habit of his where he'll win big matches, but then he can't end up with the best record. Uh, you know, I, I almost feel like telling Naito, uh, you know, there's always next year. But, but then I, I feel like I'm talking either Chicago Cubs fans or Philadelphia Eagles fans. Oh, so I'm not going oh, to. Oh, man. Well, no. <laughs> See, but the thing with Eagles fans is they they are all either borderline suicidal right now or they're thinking this year is their year. <laughs> oh, man. And here comes Shibata, though. And I got to tell you, Eagles fans, it all depends on how much they trust Chip Kelly. <laughs> exactly. I, I've heard I've heard mixed reviews. But the funny thing is. I find it incredibly appropriate that Shibata makes his entrance because you and I are here kind of yucking it up at the expense of Eagles fans and having a laugh. And uh, and then Shibata comes in and the tone completely changes because you want to talk about no nonsense. Shibata's Shibata wrote the damn and, book. And, like he just has this air of legitimacy that basically nobody else in New Japan has right now. And no, before I even get attacked by that, I'm not trying to say that nobody in New Japan has an air of legitimacy. Most of the guys in New Japan do have an air of legitimacy. Shibata's is just way bigger and better than everyone else's. I gotta tell you, Ash, I mean, He doesn't I've... even have attire. He's still wearing his young boy attire. I gotta tell you, Ashton. I mean, you know, I've grown uh, fond of Shibata as well. You came out the really big fan though which i thought was awesome but i i he's have my to say two guy now he has become my yeah. number two favorite guy in new japan behind nakamura and that's amazing and i love hearing that but and i think you would agree you know giving an honest assessment it really is a shame that towards the end of the g1 climax shibata got in his own head well as soon as he got it. eliminated as soon as he got eliminated from technically being able to win the block he just stopped trying it seems like he and naito both did that right Maybe Shibata and Naito should team up. Oh, my God, they would take over New Japan in no time with Naito's attitude. And here well, comes I mean, Mok. They, they don't really get along. They don't really seem like they would be the types to team up. That's right. Isn't it uh, what you've always said, like, Shibata really hates Naito? And they had that exchange yesterday, wasn't it? And Shibata was just sitting in the middle of the ring. Well, I mean, so, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they legitimately have heat backstage or anything like that. But just based on, on the way they've been acting in the tournament so far, it definitely seems like Shibata hates Naito's guts. Yeah, and I'm not really so into the dysfunctional tag team scene. So I think maybe we'll pass on that idea. But uh, there's Togi Makabe. Oh, man, if you're not into the dysfunctional tag team scene, you're going to love NXT. I know, hearing rumors, right? I'm hearing rumors that they're going to team up Baron Corbin and Rhino, but I don't know. Oh, man, I don't know how I feel about that. But regardless, out comes Hiroki Goto. And this guy, has he's another one that's really won me over in this tournament. I wouldn't necessarily put him in my top five, but he wouldn't have even been in my, on my radar before G1. And now he's probably in my top ten. What's so funny about both Goto and Shibata was that, you know, when they teamed up at Wrestle Kingdom 9, I'm like, oh, yeah, these guys are, are pretty solid. I've really come to see their brilliance because of this tournament, because I've got to see them extensively in singles action. I feel um, like Goto is what would happen if Shibata cared about the way he looks. <laughs> right, though? I'm like, if Shibata it. decided that he needed to get a fancy attire, and he started to bulk up a little bit and put on some muscle... And, you know, he like he, he grew his hair out and that kind of stuff. Like, it would literally just be Goto. That's it. I mean, Goto has the kind of look that screams future world champion to me. Well, and, so does I mean, Shibata, though. He does. He absolutely Shibata does. Shibata has that, like, legit MMA fighter look. Where, like, he I, might only be, like, 175 pounds, but Conor McGregor at 165 is killing everybody. Right. And, you know, I got to say, though, you know, both Shibata and Goto, and I, I'd say even Ibushi was going to start this match off. 
they're men that all have the ability to be world champions. Actually, you know? Conor McGregor's only 145. I just looked it up. I thought he was in the 165 weight class. No, it's 145. So you can you can be less than 150 pounds or less than 170 pounds or whatever and still kick people's asses. There you go. And that's I think that that's kind of, of that's here. kind of the moral of the story as far as Shibata goes. Yeah. Like even Ibushi, even... Ibushi had to bulk up to get into the the uh, heavyweight division. I think he's up to like 215 pounds now. He's a thicker dude. Shibata is probably not even that much, and he's taller than Ibushi. And Ibushi there actually, you know, did beat Togi Makabe in a G1 Climax tournament bout. But look at Makabe there with the hard shoulder block there. I think he's been looking to get a. Uh, a measure of revenge ever since, maybe get his win back in the, in the confines of this match. Maybe he'll pin Ibushi, you know, who knows. Um, but maybe Ibushi, Ash, and we keep talking about champions taking losses in the tournament. Maybe Ibushi is owed a future never openweight championship match. You know, he did beat Togi Makabe. That would be so weird because I feel like the openweight championship is like the brawler's championship, and that's the furthest thing from what Ibushi is. That's certainly true, but I, I, I Look mean... Look at Naito, I, he is such a little psychopath, I love him. And Shibata just, just staring. Oh, Hanma! Hanma Shibata! We didn't get the chance to see this in the G1. We did not, and man, what an interesting matchup this makes. Because yeah, because Hanma's... Hanma is such a powerhouse, and then Shibata just has this technical acumen second to none. Oh, Sir... man. Look at this. Yeah, I mean, Hanma's the powerhouse, and he's very momentum-based with his offense, Shibata, both with the technical acumen, to your point, and the striking prowess. Yeah. And now Hanma going to do the reverse. Hanma's there. not afraid of a striking battle himself, though. Look at this. That's true. And look oh, at that. I and Shibata, I think, just looks annoyed. I freaking love Naito, man. I love Shibata for that, though, because he just kind of looked over his shoulder, kind of like how I look when I feel like I got dust on me or something. It's like... Uh, that Shibata was just looked over his shoulder like there's a child behind him on an airplane kicking his seat. <laughs> that is perfect. I couldn't have said it any better. As, yes, Hanma did miss the first Kakeshi. It's not a top rope one, though. We still got to wait for that. Yeah. Uh, that Shibata there with the hard forearms here. <sighs> Naito's not even on the apron anymore. He literally just got up there to attack Shibata from behind. Oh, another Kokeshi attempt. Oh, look at that. Shibata nails Naito. <laughs> That's probably what that look meant. Like, well, I'm going to get you back. And he got him back. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. These guys are great. They need to have the the longest feud ever leading up to Wrestle Kingdom 10 and have a blow off there that's like 30 minutes long. I would not mind that in the slightest. And now Goto is taking it to Hanma here. Hanma shot off into the corner. Goto charges and what a spinning heel kick there. It's a shame neither Shibata nor Naito was in the B block because I wish one or both of them would have beaten Goto and earned an Intercontinental Championship match. But here we see Goto had Hanuma in a fireman's carry. But oh, oh, wow. Are you kidding me? Goto Lariat and Hanma just doesn't give a crap at all. The double Hanma. Lariat now. Oh, and Hanma takes Goto off his And team. Hanma wins the Jesus. power battle. Hanma is such Hanma a power, and in comes Naito. Slowly, kind of briskly working his way into the ring. Unbelievable. Hanma He's winning that so... power exchange. And now Naito's going to pick up where Hanma left off. There's a snapmare takedown. Drop yep. Oh, my nice God. Nice drop kick. I am just perplexed by Tetsuya Naito. I'm telling you. How great this man has become. And you just got to wonder. I mean, you told me about his past, you know, brilliant performances in the tournament. He's definitely had this guy's change. I think that was change, but... yes. And what a shot there. <laughs> the antagonism between these two. And he goes after him again. again. <laughs> He's not letting him get back on the apron. The antagonisms between these two. So... Maybe Wrestle Kingdom 10 is the place to settle it. Look at uh, Goto, though. Goto just looking at him like, look behind you. Yeah, oh my and, God. Oh, hilarious. what a lariat. <laughs> And just stomps a mud hole in Naito. Yeah, Goto. I think that was a combination of one, his partner being disrespected, and two, him. Oh, being and I think he just tagged in Shibata. He did. Shibata and Naito. How quick <laughs> until Naito tags out? Well, Naito was smiling after that beatdown from Goto, and now we'll we'll see how long it takes for that smile to be wiped off his face. Oh, what a oh, boost. what a kick! What a and Naito's still smiling. He's a psychopath. 
He loves it. He is a masochist if I've ever seen one. Now, look at that. Oh. Gosh. She's about to just scrape Jesus. in the boot. God. Oh, my God. Is he going to stand on his shoulder? Slow. Oh, Deliberate. my God. This God, feels like still... we're watching torture porn or something, man. And the face wash. And all the face wash. Jesus. And Naito. I'll tell you something. And, and Naito's that... still smiling! <laughs> what is wrong with this man? <laughs> I don't know. And a drop oh, and the kick. Drop kick. And he still hasn't wiped the smile off Naito's face. Well, I, I, I think he sort of did, but forcefully, mind you. Because Naito seems to be Naito out. trying to knock Naito for a loop, and now Naito's back to smiling. Wow. Good lord! He's... And now look at that, the, the, the front face is like there, suplex, two, and Naito kicks out. And Naito's staying in this thing. Naito hasn't even taken his shirt off. <laughs> like That is a perturbed... Oh, octopus! Octopus stretch here by Shibata, perfect for me. Look at oh, that, look at Hanma. and Hanma breaking it up. Hanma uh, standing up for Naito out of nowhere. Well, I mean, you know, they are teammates. I don't even know if Hanma really wanted to do it. He on, uh, I guess he, he really wants to get back on that winning streak that he had going. And the nice German there by Naito. Just drops Shibata on his head, man. And oh, and look at the from boot Shibata. By Shibata. Oh, and look oh. at that, the flying forearm. Naito is such an athlete. He flies from the ropes to the middle of the ring in one bound. He's so proud of himself. He spit up in the air and had a smirk. And now he's going to tag in Magabe. Magabe not taking it. Oh, Magabe's like, screw you. I like that. I think Magabe Magabe has to take it. Yeah, yeah. Naito forced him to take it. <laughs> Magabe remembers the disrespect from Naito. And now Ibushi coming in. These two again getting familiarized with each other. Why is it that every time Makabe's in the ring, so is Ibushi? Oh, what a power slam, though, from Makabe. Could Ibushi and have never opened a championship aspirations? And there's the Laird in the corner. Uh, Another Laird in the corner there. Oh, dub 10. ten Count punches. Is Ibushi going to let Makabe get all these? And I think he is. Yep. Northern Lights. And he hits it. it. Look at that. He got it. Ibushi he here. Ibushi count, kicks out. Ibushi staying in it. Makabe is, is in control pretty firmly right now. German, maybe. He has a waist lock, but look at this. Ibushi fights out of it with a couple elbows. Makabe with a forearm. Ibushi with a forearm. We're going to get an exchange here. I like Makabe in this exchange. And, yeah, and so Makabe. far, yes. Oh, but look at this. Ibushi with the strike combination. Maybe a kick That's to the of his chest there. Yeah. Into the moonsault. Beautiful. One, two. Makabe kicks out. Ibushi, that standing moonsault. Excellently executed, but it wasn't enough to put away Makabe. Excellently executed. What is Ibushi? Bret Hart now? I, I thought you would make that reference, and I've prepared a perfect counter response. No, no, he is not. That's and right. now Makabe. He's so much better. <laughs> it's so true. And now Makabe, though, with that hard lair, just creating an opening, and now Hanma gets in here. Hanma and Ibushi. Another interesting matchup here. There's the hard chop. There's a hard knife edge chop. He's got Ibushi in the corner here. There's a third. Can Irish whip him in the corner here? He's going to charge, gets the forearm. Nice. Bulldog. Bulldog there, yeah. Oh, could it be the oh, Kakeshi. He, hit, he got it. He hit his first Kakeshi on the, this time on, on Ibushi. Nice Let's blockbuster. The there. Two. But only a two count. Ibushi kicking out there. So close. On my feeling it, though. Yeah. He's he's in a groove. Fire Thunder Driver, maybe? Maybe. Oh, I know. Oh, I think he's... Oh, look at the knee, though, by Ibushi. The back Hanma elbow from Hanma. Oh, and the like drop kick. No, not a drop kick. No. A Hurricane Rana from Ibushi. Really, a Hurricane Rana there by Ibushi. And, oh, and look at Hanma. this. Anyway. Shibata and Goto going after Makabe and Naito. Giving Shibata. Ibushi all the coverage. Shibata goes after Naito. It makes the most sense in the world. Torpedo? No. Ibushi goes behind. Nice headbutt there from Goto. German from Ibushi. One, two. Oh, and look at Makabe. Okay. That was so smart. Rather than trying to break up the pit, he just kind of slid Ibushi's leg out from under him. And in the meantime, Shibata's still killing Naito. <laughs> big boot, big boot. Well, I send him over the guardrail. Yeah. 
And look at this. Ibushi wants a power bomb, but no, oh, look at this. Hanma. Oh, Hanma could be the driver. driver, maybe? No. Oh. Just the. Oh, what a kick to the head. Let me Ibushi there. Hanma, though. <laughs> Oh my oh, God. He's choking him out. Jesus, Shibata. Oh, he oh, really yeah. hates Naito. Power oh, bomb. He got the power bomb. Sit out, power bomb, too. Oh. I know, Hawk stayed in it. I don't know if you saw, but Makabe was trying to make the save. Goto was holding him back. I'm actually kind of surprised, Ashton, that uh, Ibushi didn't do kind of like a sit out release and then go oh, for the Phoenix Splash. Now he's going to try for it here. Is he going to get the Phoenix? He got, he got it. it. It's, over. it's over here. Two. Three count. Wow. Well, we knew Hanma would be the one to lose. Ibushi, or if Shibata is still choking on Naito. <laughs> oh, my God. The hatred is so real. He hates him so much. And Naito looks like he's freaking crying, man. Wrestle Kingdom 10 may be the only stage worthwhile to, you know, really contain this animosity. Oh, and, oh what a boot. <laughs> Shibata is kind of teaching Naito that he's not the only one that knows how to be a bit of a psychopath. <laughs> he scraped his boot on the man's face and they were on the outside. I'm surprised Naito doesn't have any kind of, you know, gashes or bruises or anything like that. He's not bleeding at all. But do you see Makabe here as you're just mulling Ibushi Ibushi firing back here? Yeah. Oh, and look at that. The kick takes down Makabe. The bell ringing like crazy. So much animosity between these teams. Jesus. I feel like Makabe and Ibushi and Shibata and Naito, their business is far from over. Oh, they're definitely not over. With that kind of animosity, you know something has to be in the works for these four men. Could Ibushi have never open weight championship aspirations? And does Shibata literally want to kill Naito? Well, I think we can already answer that question. Yes. I mean, forget Wrestle Kingdom 10. Yeah, I was going to say, who needs to wait to answer that one? Naito is still up, and he is taunting <laughs> the crap out of, out of Shibata, just standing there watching him in the ring. And Shibata taking his place in the center of the ring. Oh, my God. Is Naito seriously going to roll in there? He, Oh, my God. The freaking <laughs> mind games. He's saying, come on, man. Give me some more. You didn't do enough. Shibata just this, so angry. He is so butt mad right now. Dude, I'm going to tell you right now. Both uh, Shibata and this version of Naito, I am so ready for a world title run from both of these guys. Yeah. Particularly Naito, if I'm being really honest with you. Really? So good. Yeah. So good. Dude, you got to understand, he just got the crap beat out of him on the outside. And, you know, again, like a partial face wash, you know, and scraping he, the boot on his face. He just puts his hat on and leaves. <laughs> Naito is love. Naito is love. <laughs> and look at that there. All, all three men taking their place. That's quite a pose there. Ibushi. Goto, the Intercontinental Champion, and Shibata, center stage. I gotta tell you, that's pretty badass. What does the future hold for those three men? I mean, Goto, you know, he's the champion. I'll so tell he's you gotta what be the... holds, John. Success. I would have to agree with you there. Goto is a fine Intercontinental Champion. Ibushi is the future, potentially future, never open weight champion. And Shibata, well, he's gonna have to find a way to get a uh, escape from Homicide, but uh, if anybody can do it, it would be him. Because I'll tell you, the next time he gets his hands on Naito... He may finish what he started. Yeah. That's going to be so ugly, and it's going to be so wonderful at the same time. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What is next? Uh, our next match on, on the card is actually the Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship match. So with that being said, guys, we are actually going to call it here for the first half of recording. Uh, we've been going for a little over an hour, about an hour and 10, 10 11, 12 minutes, somewhere around there. So we're going to call it here for the first half. I think this might be intermission, but if it's not, we're we're still calling it for the first half. We will be back for the second half where we will be starting with the junior heavyweight tag team championship match. Young Bucks, Red Dragon should be amazing. <laughs>